Hello, hello. All right. We are live. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Just setting up the chat here. All righty. How are you guys going today? Hey, Stefano. Hey, Khalil. How's everyone? West 3 Yard. Good to, go, good to have you guys here. Um, full disclaimer, though. Um, I'm starting to get the, the sniffles. <laughs> Getting a little bit sick. Uh, hopefully, nothing, nothing, no, none of those uh, weird things going on around the world right now. It's pretty stressing. But uh, yeah, so I might have to take a couple of breaks. <laughs> um, so yeah, glad to have you guys here. I'm gonna go ahead and um, give you an idea of what we're gonna work on today, just so that um, you get excited. <laughs> There is a contest going on. I'm sure you are, have you have seen it, especially if you're part of my um, email list. So it's called the 2021st contact, which you know in retrospective looks kind of weird. The name, um, like I came up with this a while ago, but with this um, coronavirus thing, it just feels like that is the first contact, which is pretty pretty weird. Anyway. Um, the challenge is in full swing. You have, you still have like 29 days to uh, to complete it. Uh, you, you can participate in character, environment, and transport categories and win some amazing prizes. Um, I just updated this, by the way. So if you look at the um, the judges, they are you know a stellar panel of judges. Um, Miguel and Glauco, they also are sponsoring the. Um, uh, the contest as well. So if you get the first the first place in any of the three categories, um, Miguel, you get a one hour review portfolio portfolio review with uh, Miguel Guerrero, which is I think is really really awesome, as well as the Anatomy Studies Volume One from from Glauco from Glau Glauco Longhi, Sorry, um, the same thing for the second pl second place. You also get the Anatomy Study Volumes One, which is pretty cool. And if you click any of this, uh, the orange highlighted uh, words they they will take you to the to the to the page so you can see what what those are in case you're not familiar. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to point this out because today we're gonna be doing something uh, kind of like an in between. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people already working on it, which is great. So if you share your progress and share your your work towards this the um, theme and and challenge with the hashtag 2020 first contact, it's at the bottom here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so at the bottom, this hashtag, I will be able to follow it up, uh, see it, and, and you know comment comment on that. I'm not a judge, so I can help with that. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of characters, um, a, a lot of entries, or so a lot of things for character, uh, work in progress for character in the category of character. So I thought maybe just to infuse a little bit more of the, you know, of this creative. <laughs> It just infuse, infuse a little bit of um I guess inspirational uh in this inspiration in this set of categories environment and transport I'm gonna do something in between so um what I thought we could do on and work on today is kind of like a panel not a panel like um what's the name like a like just a corridor like a like a sci-fi corridor that is part of a ship so it is it is a transport as it is within a ship but it's ultimately an environment because you are in a, in a space um, and I chose to do that one because I haven't done a lot of things that are um, mostly based on the C-Modula and I know you guys uh, are, are huge fans of that or, or want to learn more about the C-Modula that's one of the things that I get most um, requests from uh, you guys so yeah I, I think we're gonna in terms of features in Seabrush we're gonna do a little bit of that C-Modula uh, the aim is just purely to, you know, uh, incentivize and move the other categories as well for the for the contest. Let's see. Um, okay, so I think I have everything set up. And um, hey, Andrew. Dot dot Roku. Comics legend, good to have you here. Stay strong, yes. It's um, some some interesting times that we are living in 
Um, I was actually thinking, you know, I, I don't know what you guys think about that. I know some of you guys have been following my work and, um, and have been following the type of things that I do. And you know that I'm up for, you know, helping the community and all that. So I thought of opening my course again, just in the light of what's happening and, you know, promoting this self isolation so that we can, um, flattening the curve of the of the spreading of the virus, but I don't know. I just felt like I don't want to capitalize on that, if that makes sense. So maybe not. <laughs> I just wanted to get uh, your two cents on on what you guys think, because um, I might be able to open it sooner than um, I had planned to open the course, the extra mile course, in a few months. Uh, but you know, given the the times that we're living in, um, I think is it could be a good chance for you guys to spend some time on something like that. But again, it's, it seems like a weird opportunity to, you know, just to do it. Um, so if you're not familiar with the type of things that I do that I've been doing, you might think, Oh, these guys just want to get some, some cash, um, from the course. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just, sorry. I'm just looking at a reference that I started creating. I'm going to bring it up here. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> this is kind of like what I had in mind. Um, and if you saw my presentation back in 2018 about the, um, about, well, about my process and workflow in general in the Zero Summit, I talked about the, um, uh, feature mapping, which is something that I do when I'm starting a new project, just, uh, do a quick sketch thumbnails, nothing too complex where I add, um, certain things or I, sp uh, break things apart. And then I try to figure out what would be a good um, feature in zeros to use it or any other software, right? So I did this quick concept or this idea of, uh, this is meant to be like a corridor, a sci-fi corridor. And I broke it down into four different pieces. So one, two, three, and four. And the fifth one, which is this one is kind of like the door at the end. And what I thought we could play around with, and it's again, something that I haven't tried, but I'm like, in theory, it should work. Um, the theory is there. Um, I would have a few nano mesh, or nano mesh, no, um, a few planes, very, very simple planes. Uh, and then we'll, com we'll create these pieces as nano mesh objects so that we can insert it into what it could be the, the corridor. So that would be the idea. So you end up with uh, something that looks rather complex because of the, you know, the use of different pieces, but um, ultimately is going to, um, is going to be very simple in, in the way that we approach it. So hopefully we get to do, um, most of the, of the pieces for the puzzle today. And if, uh, I reckon we can definitely do it. I mean, it's, it's rather simple. We're going to use simple shapes, a lot of, you know, um, he hexagons or diagonals, um, to create that sci-fi look. And then again, I'm not, um, I don't do this as much and this is a great opportunity for me to, you know, keep practicing this and try something new. But so because I don't do this often, you know, the design itself might be like, eh, doesn't, doesn't really work, but I just wanted to show you what, um, what the idea was. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put it here on my second monitor. All right, let's see. How to get this anatomy head on the top right? Uh, you can make your own and whatever you do, let's say if I want to, like you can create your head, right? Like imagine that the, the cube that I currently have is my head. I can go to the preference tab, go to the cam view and click on create or make new cam view. So you can have um, anything that you want. You can have a head, um, anything really, and you can poly paint anything you want, a material, and then click on make cam view. That's it. <laughs> I was waiting, but that, that's it. So Sirius goes, goes ahead and um, takes photos. I think it's eight photos at four different angles. Um, eight, yeah, I think it's, I think it's 32 photos in all together and it creates this, um, based on what you have on screen. So all I did was just create a head, um, click on that button and you will create it. So I have a few, so I have a skeleton, have a full body plus the ones that come with ZBrush, have a skeleton 
right. Uh, but that's that's really all there is to it. Actually, I don't need this today, so let's simplify it. And I'm gonna make sure I select no, um, no texture. Okay. Now I'm gonna be using a lot of the tools that I have at the bottom, which for you guys. Let's see if I can fix that actually. Give me one second. It's gonna push the entire screen up a bit. Maybe squish it. Nah. No, that's probably not gonna work. Never mind it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be using some of the tools that I have here, kind of like hidden on the left, bottom left of the screen. Uh, but most of them for you guys would be on the geometry palette. I will point you uh, towards them. Uh, there will be like dynamics of division and that sort of thing, and the Q cubes and all that. Um, Alrighty. Um, all right, cool. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to start with one of the main parts. So I have a simple cube that I just went ahead where it was a, it was something else. And I went to the initialize tab and click on the Q cube. So you can have, you know, anything that you want, anything at all. It's going to smooth this out to show you that this could be anything could be a primitive or whatever. And then you can click on Q cube and see going to simplify it and fit it into the uh, units of two by two by two, which is the ADL dimensions for uh, series to work with. So what I'm going to start with is just establishing the kind of like one of the main panels, the ones that are on the on the walls. And for that, I'm going to set the size, length and all that using the C modula. Sorry, the C modula, the uh, uh, gizmo, gizmo 3D. So I think I'm going to scale it up down the X axis a little bit. Just give it a bit of thickness just in case. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the floor so that I don't see those annoying lines. Um, well, they annoy me a little bit. And then I'm gonna work with symmetry so that it's faster to work with. All right, uh, now I'm gonna bring in the C modeler and I have enabled polyframe as well. So, oh, by the way, let me just change the material. Um, I have a few materials here. Um, also, you might have already seen it. Um, there's some amazing work that some of the guys, uh, you know, Sirush artists have been working on and doing with the digital clay pack. Um, and so I decided to just do a series of extra materials that you can sort of like work on and see the effect of the brushes a little bit more, you know, a bit easier. And, and it looks more like clay straight away in Sirush. Uh, and I'm going to release this one as, you know, a free little thing. Uh, so it's just six different materials. Um, but anyway, I wanted to, to mention them. They're pretty cool. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and continue with this. So with the C modular, I'm going to start establishing the main loops. So I'm going to right click on the edge and I'm going to slide this one down. And this one is going to determine kind of like the baseline, I guess, or like the, the area at the bottom. And I think that should be that should be a good starting point somewhere around there. Okay, I'm going to right click again. I'm going to select insert, click and drag. And this is going to be obviously the top area. And I'm going to, I have symmetry enabled, so I'm going to do the same thing here. And this center, actually, I'm going to give it a, oops, a polygroup. So let me just repeat what I just did there. Um, I'm going to hold the Alt key, select the polygons that I want, right click, go to polygroup, and I'm just going to click once, right? And that's just uh, one of the tools in the C modeler to assign a polygroup to that area. All right. Um, I should have already, I mean, I should have slide everything down. Um, let me just undo all that. So right click on the edge. Make sure that when you click slide, it's set to edge loop, edge loop complete. So it's going to move everything down, not just partially. All right, something like that. Insert, I'm gonna repeat this very quickly. Move this one up a bit. Polygroup, there we go. We're back. Um, 
I just wanted to have the, the lines a little bit straight there. All right. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is give it a bit of depth. So um, all of this polygroup is the same. The blue one is exactly the same. And I think at the back is also the same. So just for just to be safe, I'm going to hold the Alt key and tag the polygons that I want to move. I'm going to right click on the face, make sure Q mesh is selected. I want to click and I'm going to hold the shift key. Hmm. It's not working the way that it's supposed to. Hang on. It is actually working the way that it's supposed to. I'm, I'm not working. My brain is not working the way that it's supposed to. So um, just the normal click and drag just to extrude that. So I'm going to push that forward a bit. Just about there. That should be fine. That's going to give that extra little gap. Um, the one in the center, what I'll do is I'm going to scale it down. So right click scale and I'm going to scale to the instead of the mesh center which I think encompasses the entire mesh that you have here I'm going to use the um, polygon center right so it's going to try to find the, pol the center of these polygons so click and drag and it creates this you know the first kind of like diagonal around here um, which is close to what I had in mind anyway I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit more I think it's fine. And actually, I'm going to push the green, light green polygroup forward. So make sure QMesh selected. Now I can click. Whoops. Again, right click on the on the face, QMesh. I'm going to make sure that polygroup all is selected as my target so that I can select everything of the same color. Click and drag. And I'm going to hold the shift key now. And now I can sort of move that. And that is one of the you know, one of the good reasons of using for using the Q mesh um, instead of extruding or, or scaling and all, and all that. Um, let me see how uh, we go in the chat here. Can I new to the 3D world? How can I start? <laughs> I'm lost. Well, that's um that's a super broad question. Um, I would say start looking at tutorials and see what you what your um what you like and what you're interested in and focus on that and try to narrow it down a little bit. <laughs> that will be my first stop. Uh, if you're new to Sirius though, there is, if you go to the Sirius guides, there is a section that it's called um, start here and you can start there. Literally, I have a bunch of resources and tutorials and uh, free guides that sort of like give you an introduction to Sirius. Hey, Daniel. Daniele, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Daniele Colombo. He's, um, he's one of the extra mile students as he's, he's doing a, a phenomenal job uh, working on this character. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say anything if, if he wants to keep it a secret until it's um, finished, but it's absolutely fantastic. Hey, Alejandro, how's it going, man? Would you also be able to use array mesh for the spaceship corridor? Uh, probably, that might be that. That might be a good idea. I do want to test out the um, the other idea that I have for you know populating that. But anyway, let's <laughs> continue with this because this is not much. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add a bit of you know complexity to this uh, very quickly, just by using you know some of the polygroups that I already have here. So one thing we can do. I think I'm going to just add a couple of insert meshes or insert, um, not meshes, insert uh, loops so that it also helps to sharpen things up a bit because right now they're a bit disproportionate, the, the spaces. So I'm going to do something like this, uh, like that. Um, and in this area here, I'm going to go insert, insert, sorry, insert region. And I'm going to insert that. So, and that's that could be kind of like the space for, you know, like a, a tubular shape that would make, you know, a good lamp. <laughs> um, this is not perfectly straight. So I'm going to go ahead and 
maybe isolate this. And I'm gonna use the right click to select the point. And where is it? And I'm gonna use the slide. So the slide is going to allow you to very quickly slide it along an edge. So it's not perfect by any means there, but um, that's what I want to do. Just very quickly. So that is more of a straight line there. Let's bring back everything else. Right click, Q mesh, and I'm going to extrude this one up. And I'm, as I do this, I can hold the Alt key and it will assign different polygroups. I can cycle through different colors. All right, so that is well, that would be the idea. I'm going to right click on the face and I'm going to go to the uh, mask option. So also, well, in this case, it doesn't matter, but um, I'm going to click on the on this face with the mask option and it's going to automatically mask just those masks. Invert the mask, bring in the gizmo 3D, center it to the unmask areas, and then I can just go ahead and rotate this holding shift there we go and let's go ahead and reset the rotation I can go ahead and move this up a bit all right I think that works and then we can just worry about the you know the edges and all that afterwards but I think that works all right if anything we could bring in these edges closer, actually. So I'm going to hold control to access my masking tools and just mask basically what I did there. I used the masking tool to mask only these points and the ones behind it. And because I'm using symmetry, I'm doing the same thing. So I can now take this bit and flatten it so that it's straight and move it closer. So it's just going to be easy to, to sharpen those um, edges around here. All right, so I'm going to invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, center it to the unmask areas, and I can just, well, it was supposed to work. There we go. Um, when you're working with symmetry, if you don't have the local symmetry enabled, Siri is going to scale things based on the center line. So um, in this case, I want to activate local symmetry, which for you guys should be under the transform palette, this one here. And I can go ahead and scale base on you know local symmetry locally so i can do that oh sorry let's go ahead and do it again and let's bring that closer all right so that's not looking bad let's click on dynamic just to see roughly what this looks like and we can go ahead and enable the q grid i'll show you where that is uh, basically, let's just do it from here so that you guys can see. Okay, let me repeat what I did. Um, now that I have this very simple shape, I can go to dynamic under the dynamic subdivision, enable it, and that's going to give me this preview of how my geometry looks like. It's very, you know, soft and blobby. Uh, so I can use the Q grid, which is going to um, subdivide each polygon based on a grid. So one subdivision, kind of like one um, quick grid is giving me this result. Um, we can go two to sharpen even more and you can play with the bevel, chamfer. Uh, chamfer is a little bit softer, right? Or you can play with both at the same time, constant. Um, you can use coverage to change how much, you know, the sharpness of this. So I think just adding a tiny bit of beveling is pretty cool. And again, this is just a preview, so we can turn it off and keep working on the, on the actual thing, right? And when we turn it on, you'll see that's the that's the result. So I think it was two coverage. Yeah, I think that looks alright. I'm gonna turn it off, go back to what we had. Alright, so the other thing that I have in the sketches uh, is nothing too it's nothing too complicated really. But um, we might as well do it. So I have a couple of lines going through it that just generate kind of like this sci-fi look. Uh, so we might as well do that. Um, just thinking what could be an easy way to do it. Maybe 
if we use the slice, um, not the trim, the slice curve. So I'm going to go to the slice curve, holding Control and Shift to access that. And that basically allows you to draw a line like this through the model, and it's just going to cut through it and give you polygroups, right? So with this, I mean, this is not going to be great because there's some triangles and stuff. But if I enable dynamic, you won't really see the difference, really. And this is not going to be perfect topology or anything for production. <laughs> it's just going to be a concept. So um, I'm going to use this to create that that kind of look. So I'm going to try to replicate what I have in my sketch. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift, click and drag somewhere around there. Ugh, let's do it again. <laughs> Control Shift, click and drag. If you hold Shift, you'll get a perfect line or a straight line. Um, if you hold the Alt key a couple of times, it will create a very sharp point. So I'm going to double click the Alt key and then go like this. So now I have this point in the line and I'm just going to go maybe around there. Another double tap the Alt key, hold Shift for a straight line. Let go and it generated this, uh, this line. Okay, um, again, nothing. The topology, I'm not worried about the topology. It's working fine. Um, what I'm going to do now is probably fix these points a bit. So I'm going to use the masking tool and spacebar to move that. So control and move that. Invert that selection. Go to the gizmo. Center it. Uh, we don't need symmetry right now. Just going to move it a bit. Actually, I'm going to just move it up. All right, cool. So now that we have this line, what we can do is split it. Let's see how it would work. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to work entirely because it has these, you know, triangles. Um, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to bevel. I'm going to click and drag. Oh, OK, pretty good. So with bevel, we just create this line. We have to fix the thickness around the center, but I think this line is pretty decent. I'm going to make it very small. All right. And as you can see, we created a series generated and new poly. So we use the Q mesh later on to uh, to um, add thickness or not thickness to push that in and create like that panel. So let's right click on the um, on the point, select slide. It's going to slide this up and this one down a bit. And I'm just eyeballing it. There's this, this um, more precise ways to do the, this, but um, in an effort to say that, I'm just going to go for the simple one. Uh, I'm going to right click on a face, make sure QMA is selected, make sure my target is polygroup all, and I'm going to push this green polygroup in a little bit. So click and drag. And there is our panel. I'm going to also hold the Alt key a couple of times while I'm dragging just to create a different polygroup in case we need it. So now we have that sort of like paneling effect. We can check what's going on with the dynamics of division. Right? So I think that is pretty cool. We definitely can um, add a couple of edge loops in the middle so that we can sharpen that line. But overall, I think it gives, a, it gives us a, a good indication of what, what's in here. Uh, let's go ahead and sharpen those. So I think we can go ahead and right click, insert. I'm going to insert one right there in the middle, another one in the middle, so in the, in the little gap. So now it's a, it's a bit sharper. Uh, we can also do the same thing along um, along the curve but I, I do like the you know the soft bevel that it gives me so it's not super sharp um, maybe we can sharpen up the kind of like the inner part that is something that we can do so for that and this is another cool trick so I want to have an edge loop right in the middle that then I can bevel right so that it gives me consistent thickness on each side of this um, you know, orange polygroup. 
if I use the, um, I'm going to right click and I have the insert. If I use the single edge loop, we'll obviously add a single edge loop. It's not going to be exactly in the middle. If I add the multiple edge loop, but I only click and drag to enable only one, it's going to be right in the middle because zero is going to find uh, the average middle point and it's going to split that into multiple edge loops. So in other words, let me just show you. I'm going to click and, and that uh, actually just gives me one single polygroup right in the middle between the next uh, two edges. And if I just drag, so we're just going to, from that point in the middle, split that in multiple edge loops, right? So what I'll do is exactly that. Just click, oops, ah. <laughs> Sirius remembers the last uh, thing that you did. So in this case, we was creating all of this. So I'm gonna set it to one and let's click on here, only one. There we go. So you create one single poly or edge loop across the middle of that panel. Now I'm going to right click, go to bevel, click and drag, and click and drag, and that will give me a consistent thickness there. And that extra poly loop is the one that is going to sharpen the inside of that panel. All right, it's not too bad. Um, I'm just thinking that we th there's, there's a potential simple way to uh, to fix you know the the triangles. Um, I might do that later actually. Let me see. I'm just gonna paint on top. So um, hang on. I don't know if you guys can see everything I'm doing. Yeah. Um, if you guys prefer, I can actually turn that off. All right. So the triangles here, I think what I can do is just create a couple of lines here. Delete these ones. So you end up with one quad here, but it's going to give you that triangular shape, but you're going to have the extra point in here. And then this one will be quads as well. So that's um, just a, an easy fix. Otherwise, you'll end up with these points um, that could give you problems when you subdivide. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I think. Interesting. Let's see if I can do that really quickly. Okay, something like that. Um, so what I did there was I right click on the edge and I click on split. So it basically split that edge and now I can um, I can dissolve this edge, this one here, and delete, delete edge, and this one as well. And in this case, I do, uh, this one did it properly, but huh. I'm gonna delete this one and delete this one. And I still have that corner here. So probably that wasn't the best one um, if I, Split this one. I'm starting to to mess up what I did before, but let's just don't do that. Uh, so if I this this side is gonna look a little bit better. Ah, it's alright. So see, hopefully you guys can see the subdivision here. It's a little bit weird, and it gives me that sort of like line. It's not as visible, but if you wanna s fix it the way that I just did that. That is the way to do it, or one one way to do it. Um, if I go ahead and split this one, let me just try to fix that. Right, if I split that, <laughs> let's try to think what would be the easiest way to do it, just so that I don't end up with a bunch of um, topology, because right now this is giving me multiple triangles. I'm gonna leave it like that. 
I guess the easiest way to solve that problem of uh, having that triangle in this case would be to just tag all of these polygons, go to insert and insert region, and that is going to give me that extra point in here. Although something going on there. You know what? I'm going to undo everything that I did. I just don't, don't want to risk it. It's fine. I was just trying to be too clever for my own um, current state. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to do it the way that I just mentioned. So I'm going to hold the Alt key to tag these polygons. Go to Insert, Insert Region, and roughly that's going to create triangles. Um, let's leave it as it is. It's not. It's not going to be a big deal. I'm just trying to. I'm trying too hard. Uh, but this is again. This is the result of the slice that we did. And there's other methods of creating this this line. In fact, I'm going to go back and do everything so that it's cleaner and give you guys some other tools. So I'm going to go back in time quite a bit until before we did that splitting. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a simpler method that is going to leave leave you a cleaner topology and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, because with the slice, depending on how you slice, you end up with those triangles and then you have to figure that out. And we want to, you know, we want to keep things clean in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and mask this line. Oops. Scale it. Let's do the same thing all the way here. So now we have a straight line in there, as opposed to this one that is all curly. If anything, we can just mirror it and weld, and then we'll have that straight. Um, and then what we can do is actually move it closer. Oh, whoops, before that, I'm going to create a couple of insert, um, insert edges with a single edge loop. So this one will create the curve that we need, maybe around there. I think it's fine. And I'm going to create straight away a new one here. So you'll see I already have that curve, but everything is like kind of like quads. So let's um, let's move all of these points. All right, and maybe Maybe this one's a bit more. All right. So probably this would have been <laughs> an easier approach um, than what I did before. But you know, it's good to try new things anyway. So um, actually, let's move this one even further back. I'm just trying to design as I go, which is uh, what makes things slower. All right, but now we have this line that is sort of, you know, give you that that angle. And now we can use the bevel option here and bevel this entire thing. Maybe make it a bit narrower, like so. And then just follow the same procedure. So you see, it's very easy with these techniques and this um, you know, Cmodela to go back and redo things. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, instead of doing what I did before, which was adding the edge loops at the at the borders, I'm gonna just drag it not too much. I'm gonna hold the Alt key to assign a different polygroup, and then I'm gonna repeat the same process. So that's gonna give me that loop straight away in the middle. Hopefully you can see it. So it's basically extruding it a couple of times. All right, so now we have a cleaner topology that we can play around with. And um, we can actually sharpen this even more if we wanted to. I'm just gonna add an edge loop there. So insert, um, sorry, insert edge loop, multiple edge loops, click once and then bevel that. So this is exactly the same thing I did before. Just going back to what we had. Uh, what's good about having these uh, more clean topology and don't have, and you don't have any triangles is that you can add more, uh, more um, edge loops to sharpen the the lines in here. So right now, 
we have, uh, I think it's a, it's a nice bevel, but if you want to sharpen this even more, what you can do is right click, insert, single edge, click and drag, whoops, single edge loop, click and drag, and then you will get closer to that line. And that's going to sharpen that, that edge quite a bit. Uh, which is kind of like what we want, really. So we want an edge there. Um, I think I want to do a couple more, just a kind of like a designy thing, and then move a, a little bit faster because this is taking to make just one wall. <laughs> and I was, I was planning to do the uh, a few assets today. Uh, let me just check check the chat. Um, hey, Pablo, I've been seeing people block out hard surface objects in Dynamesh mode using clip brushes with polygroups. What are your reasons for not standing up that way? Um, no, I do start with Dynamesh most of the times for more organic stuff. This is pretty simple. So uh, depending on the complexity and how complex the shape you want it to be, uh, it's probably easy to do it in Dynamesh, clip stuff, and then retopologize. In this case, you can control the topology from the beginning, and it's just easier to do it this way. Uh, if you go back to a few episodes when we did the the robot, I started like that and I kept it as Dynamesh all the way through. Just gonna add um, an edge here, just to sharpen this a bit more. And I'm going to add a couple of slices here or edge loops just to create an extra bit of design. like so all right and then I'm gonna take this point I'm gonna bring it down that's it and then I can use all of these to create maybe I'm actually gonna push this out that will be more interesting I think so just a single polygroup there let me just repeat that action Extrude that a little bit. Whoops. There we go. Just assign a different polygroup. Let's repeat that. There we go. And if we enable dynamic, this is starting to look a bit more interesting. Just with a couple of extrusion and you know panels like that. And I'm gonna keep it fairly generic so that when we repeat it, it doesn't look as you know as repeated are repetitive so the panel here is is totally fine um, what else did I put in the in the quick sketch I think that's about it really as a, as a base so this one is ready but it's not ready to become a nanomesh It's ready as the base we're gonna definitely add a few more things just to make it more interesting like insert meshes and that sort of stuff um, but I think this one is fine so I'm gonna do a quick save <laughs> All right, so this is a single subtool in my tool, um, in my tool, <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and convert it into a QQ and continue working from there for the next bit, uh, which would be kind of like the top part of the. Um, for those of you guys who like just joined us, I'm showing you. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing or the idea. So I just created this bit. in a way. So we have that sort of like paneling effect and this extra stuff and the this hole for a, for a light. And we're going to make it more complex in just a bit. Uh, so now let's go ahead and do the, the one at the top. And that's kind of like this bit. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, so this one won't take too long. Then we do the bottom one, then the top one and the corridor, uh, the corridor. So the, the door for the corridor corridor. That's what we <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. So as long as we have the base right, uh, then we can add complexity with insert meshes and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to duplicate this. So now I'm going to go into solo mode as well. These are two of the same. I'm going to go to the initialize tab, click on Q-Cube, and that immediately changes whatever I have here into a simple cube that we can continue working with. 
So um, I'm going to get out of solo mode just so that I can establish the length of this roughly the same. Right? So I'm going to scale that up, make sure perspective is off. So it's about there. Right? If I want it to be, you know, perfect, I can unify everything at the end, but I think this one is fine. And what I'll do then is just change, whoops, that way. Change the kind of like the thickness. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're gonna change that anyway. And then the height. So that's gonna kind of like sit on top. So I'm gonna try to work in a similar way of how they're gonna be placed this um this stuff. Somewhere there. So a little bit higher. Alright. Um so yeah, we're gonna work on this bit now. And in solo mode is probably gonna be easier. Um I'm gonna take a quick break guys. I'll be back in two seconds. It's gonna sneeze <laughs> somewhere else. I'll be back. Okay, be back. Um, you are saying right click to bring up the similar menu instead of the space bar. Are you able to change it? Would you um, so where did I put my pen here? Um, there, uh, by default, those are the two options. You can press space bar or you can right click. I just have the right click map to one of these buttons in my Wacom pen, so it's just easier than reaching for the keyboard in a way. But yeah. Um, okay, so for this one, uh, I guess we could use the array mesh, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna right click, make sure I have symmetry enabled, right click, insert, and I'm gonna make sure I have multiple edge loops inserted. So click, and that creates kind of like four panels. Uh, which is fine. I think that would be fine. Yeah, four panels. Um, and then we can go ahead and take this one, this edge loop, and we can slide that one. Edge loop complete, just so we can slide the entire thing down. Go and get out of solo mode. So here at the bottom, I just need a tiny bit of uh, a space. That's, that's about it. Um, and then the rest is going to be kind of like sticking out. So I'm going to uh, let's go ahead and insert this single edge loop something like that that should be fine alright so now I can right click make sure Q mesh is selected for the polygon hold the alt key 
tag these polygons and when I click and drag and hold the shift key just to push this forward something about there I think that is fine we can mask this invert the mask and you know push this one forward a bit more I think there is fine all right so that that would be kind of like the some kind of storage you need or something in there um, kind of like in the in an airplane or something for the carry-on luggage in a way um, then another thing we can do here is we can bevel this so that it doesn't look as harsh so about there right and then when we enable dynamic it should give us something a bit more a bit more subtle uh, of course we have um, grid Q grid to 2 so I'll set it to 0 and then increase the smooth subdivision and I think that will be fine we just need to sharpen some of the, the edges obviously uh, but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and create kind of like the paneling effect so I'm gonna right click go to bevel and this is gonna be pretty tiny On. there we go uh, I'm gonna turn off symmetry and do it right in the middle as well so now we have these polygroups that are different so I'm just gonna hide whoops go to the selection tools I'm gonna hide everything but these polygroups it's gonna be it's gonna be annoying <laughs> you know what it's gonna be just easier to um, to just repeat the same action. So I'm gonna go to symmetry, right click, make sure QMesh is enabled, get a bit closer, click and drag, holding the Alt key a couple of times just to change the polygroups inside, like I did before. And let's go ahead and repeat that. Oops. Couple of times. All right, and let's do the same thing here. Okay, so that creates those panels in there. That's gonna give me a bit more of sharpness uh, once I enable dynamic in that area, which is fine. All right. So now let's go ahead and sharpen the, the other edges. I think this one is, I'm gonna keep it very simple. Not, not much that we have to do for this one. Um, if anything, we can bevel the edges here. So bevel just a tiny bit so that it doesn't have that sharp edge going in into the next block. Um, I'm gonna mask this, invert the mask bring in the gizmo and I'm gonna push this back a bit all right uh, I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit more just make sure that it's a bit more consistent all right so that's not looking bad um, I'm gonna go ahead and right click insert edge and hang on single insert sorry <laughs> single single edge loop uh, symmetry enable click and drag whoops what was that don't know what happened there and I'm just gonna put it really close to the edge so that it will sharpen that um, this this side a lot when we use dynamic so it's very sharp uh, we can even do another one closer so that's gonna be very sharp and I'm gonna re repeat the same process for the front so a couple of edge loops and you can do the same thing while, while dynamic subdivision is enabled uh, to get this this kind of result which is kind of like what I'm going for I'm gonna sharpen the the line in here uh, and I'm gonna show you a different way to do it 
So instead of adding another loop, which allows you to control the amount of sharpness, so actually this is kind of like what I want anyway, so I'll just do it with this. Uh, but you can totally um, enable the creasing, so you can right click on an edge, let me turn this off, you can right click on an edge, go to crease here, and then you can crease that edge and it's going to be uh, completely sharp. Um, in fact, hmm, let's undo a couple of these. It's trying to give you a couple of, uh, you know, different options. So I'm going to do that for the top and sides since they're pretty much the same. So there we go. So we're back to where we had before. I'm going to right click and I'm going to edge, um, crease the edge and I'm going to go for edge loop partial. So it's going to do the entire edge, um, where the, the edge kind of like splits. So in this corner, so for example, if I click in this area, it's going to do it all the way around, except, uh, well, until it finds an edge that it sort of like splits into. Uh, so Zero doesn't know where, which one you want to continue doing. That's kind of like the partial. So I'm going to click in here and you'll see it has this dotted line across this one. And that's going to be very, very hard. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here, 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 and at the bottom as well. Let's see, uh, hang on. I think we don't need it for the bottom. Let's double check. Dynamic. Yeah, we need it. We need it for this beveling effect. All right. So that's um, that's going to give us these very hard edges, which is kind of like what we need in this case. And then we can use these split edges around here to sharpen this other part. So let's do that. Just a couple of edges there. And we still have the nice uh, curved area here. Let's see how it's looking. I think it's fine. We might, let's just see how it looks if we sharpen maybe the top area a bit more. And then just leave that curve at the bottom. I think it's more interesting. can go ahead and reposition that with the gizmo 3d that's easy maybe push these points forward and do dynamic again there we go cool I think that is looking fine all right so that's another uh, another tool <laughs> or another uh, part ready let's do another one so duplicate, go to Q mesh, uh, sorry, Q cube in the initialize tab. Q cube, select that. Symmetry of center. Um, so let's go ahead and do the floor. What's the time? I think we're gonna be able to, you know, add the details already for these pieces. Uh, so let's do the floor. The floor is gonna be extremely simple as well. So roughly the same width, push it down, and I think the floor should be starting from there, somewhere there. Okay, now let's um, let's see. So the floor is gonna have. Um, a diagonal line straight away. So I reckon the easiest way to do it is just to eliminate one of these loops or the loop. So let's go to delete, edge loop complete, and let's click on that one. So it just clears that edge all around and that's just gonna be much easier to, for example, select only these points in here, go with the gizmo 3D and then push that forward. So from the profile line, 
it looks kind of like that, which is fine. So that's not the floor, it's like the, the bottom part of the wall. And we can just play around with adding this piece or not, just to add variation, hopefully. And I think that's fine. That's, look, that's looking good. Uh, and in one of the sides, maybe opposite to this line, so on the right hand side, we can create um, a little bump or something that extrudes out. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to insert, hang on, insert single edge loop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have the mask enabled. There we go. So maybe around there. So it kind of matches that line. I think that will be fine. And I'm going to tag this polygon, extrude that tiny bit. And then extrude it again, this time a little bit more. And then I'm going to use the masking tools to just mask that area. So just mask that, uh, that face. We can center that and we can rotate it holding the shift key. Or we don't really have to really. All right. And that is gonna give us a tiny bit of gap at the bottom, which is ideal for what I wanna do. So this is gonna give me that uh, idea that it's not straight down into the ground, but there's something else in between. And that's gonna give it a, a bit more of a visual interest, I think. There we go. And then let's take just the, the bottom, uh, the top part, bring it down. All right, and what I'll do is actually push this one back. So I wanna keep that diagonal line. And I'll tell you why in a second. Right. So I think that that looks cool. Let's see if we turn on dynamic and we go to Q grid two bevel. That's fine. I think that looks cool. Uh, we can sharpen even this a bit more so that it's very obvious so that it doesn't look like a, like a mistake and it looks intentional. So let's go ahead and mask this. And I'm just gonna move it up a bit more. Right, and push this one forward a bit. There we go. And if anything, what we can do actually, like I said, I, I'm, as I do this, I'm also trying to think a bit about the design. So I'm gonna push this down. And I'm just going to mask the bottom part. And I'm going to flatten those so that they are at the same level. Right. So dynamic. I'm going to add an extra edge loop there to sharpen that little bit. And I think that's fine. Again, uh, some of the details and the complexity of this is just going to be insert meshes like grids and panels, extras that uh, we're going to put in there after. Um, all right, so that's looking good. Um, this obviously covered one of the paneling from the from the back, but um, it's not a big deal. If anything, we're just actually going to move this down uh, once we insert it, I think. And that's going to you know complete the effect. So let's just leave it like that so that you guys see um, what's happening. Uh, now this one also has kind of like, a, like a vent in here that we can, you know, we can use insert meshes and stuff, but we need to create kind of like a hole for it. So let's do that. And that should, you know, give me the opportunity to show you something else, like another technique. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert an edge loop right there, maybe more towards the bottom. Right. And let's go ahead and split this actually. Bevel. And the beveling would give us, or would determine the, the size of that uh, gap. All right. 
and let's do the same thing for this one. So this polygon right there, I'm going to give it a different polygroup. The pink one is going to be the hole for that vento, or it could be just a light as well for the for the floor. That could be something interesting. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what we can do. Um, Q mesh. Yeah, I'm gonna just use the Q mesh to push it in. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, again, the complexity will be given by some insert meshes. So you see, you have this. Maybe with this, it's gonna be a bit easier to see. I, you have these lines in there. Is because um, we have disproportionate. Uh, polygon so you have these big squares compared to the these rectangles here that are a bit smaller So all we have to do really is just add a couple of insert meshes in this case or insert uh, loops. Sorry Around here just to sharpen that edge and that one. So whoops Around the same length and maybe another one here So now uh, all around it's a little bit more consistent and Then you don't have those lines happening uh, if you want to sharpen up the actual border of this, we can add another one inside and another one inside there. And we can actually move these ones down, slide. So I'm going to slide it down. Whoops. There we go. So now you see all around there is more consistency, so that should sharpen things and make it yeah <laughs> look more consistent all right and we can of course play with the beveling option the coverage so that changes the the amount of bevel the sharpness of the overall piece um and i think that's fine just as um maybe just to add a tiny bit more of design before we move into the insert meshes what i can do is let's toggle this off i'm gonna I'm going to do it in both sides actually. I'm going to hold the Alt key and tag these ones, right? These two pieces. I'm going to go to the inset, inset region, click and drag, and that creates a couple of lines, a couple of inset uh, polygroups. And then we can take this slide. And this time, I don't want to slide everything. I want to slide just one edge. And I'm just going to add variation in thickness here and the shapes oops so they're not exactly the same thing and they're gonna be very very simple stuff um, I'm not sure yet if it's gonna work but give it a go I'm gonna tag them again with alt right click Q mesh and push this one in a bit right so that is just gonna create a, an extra level of complexity um, that we don't because they when we add the insert meshes is going to be additive so it's going to be adding volume um, so if i just push things kind of like subtracting like boolean uh, would be another option uh, i'm just going to get this effect and hopefully that looks all right i think it does just to add more complexity to it and again we can um, fine tune more of these shapes later on all right so we're getting there uh, we have three shapes and it's, this is a kind of like a good approach to it. Like it could be modular, so it will be will be fine. Um, I just noticed this a tiny bit of a an issue there. Oh, it's not bad. Actually, it's not. It's not. See, not. It's not easy to to see. Um, I'm gonna toggle dynamic off, and now let's do a quick save. I think we're gonna continue with the with the roof. We still have time. Let's see. If you guys have any questions? Uh, what about using the crease and increase option? Um, yeah, I mean, like like anything, it's just whatever works. Re really, <laughs> um, I just 
you know, preferred to add in this case that I don't really have to worry too much about the topology uh, and creasing. Um, I just prefer to do the edge loops. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the thing with the creasing tool is that it's hard to, I mean, you can do it inside Zbrush, but it's hard to establish exactly how harsh the edges you want them to be. Um, so for me, it's just faster to slide a, an edge and see how much um, sharpness I'm getting. Is the is there a mirror function for the lines to be consistent? Yeah, absolutely. You can just enable symmetry. That's that's your mirror. Um, or if I want to mirror this entire design, I can just go ahead and mirror and well. So I can mirror to change the this. Let me just go back. Right, I can mirror this effect. So just flipping it, and then I can mirror and weld. And it's just going to give me exactly the same thing in both sides. I just want to keep it asymmetric. All right. Uh, let's do the same thing. Duplicate. Q cube. All right. So this is going to be uh, the piece for the for the roof. So again, let's do the same. Usually, well, roughly the same width. There we go. So it's about there, okay? Um, we'll fix the rest of the stuff. I just wanna make sure I have an idea. Because this one's, um, once we create the insert nano mesh brush, these things are gonna be, um, you know, they're gonna change the, the placement. So I just wanna have a, a rough idea of where to put them. It'll be cool to give a leave a, a little bit of a gap there, actually. And we can put some lights in there, whatever, in another software. Um, anyway, I think this is fine. Let's uh, go to the skin material, go into solo mode. And this is the space that we have to play around with. Um, so I think it's a little bit too wide when I make a narrow corridor. Mm, maybe it's too narrow. Mm. All right, let's leave it as, as we had originally and maybe we do three panels instead of two inside. Um, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to right click, go to insert, symmetry enable. All oh, right. <laughs> there we go. Symmetry. Uh, hang on a second. Well, I might have to use the Z one instead just to keep everything consistent yeah so um, in this case the X axis is on this side like the same way that we've been creating the other stuff uh, but in this case we can just toggle off symmetry in X and enable it in the Z axis so if I turn on the floor you'll see that blue line indicating the Z axis is this way is now uh, what allows me to make these uh, symmetrical changes right and I have local symmetry that's why this could be anywhere really because it's going to uh, add the symmetric patterns or whatever you do based on the space and the volume that whatever piece you have is occupying rather than the center of the world. That's why if I turn this off, um, if I turn symmetry, local symmetry off, you'll see the symmetry is based on that center line of the world. So this is kind of like an important thing. So the, the center line of the scene is right here. If we have local symmetry off, then whatever I do here is going to end up being on the other side of the world. But because I have this on, then it's going, Siri is going to analyze the volume of the entire piece that I have. And it's going to say, okay, the line uh, or the middle point of that volume is right here. So now I can just do whatever I want here. And based on this symmetry, local symmetry is going to be in that area. That's why, that's why I have it on. Uh, and also because now I have this uh, Z axis, I just enabled it on the Z and disable it on the X. 
So now let's go ahead and insert one. So I just want to create kind of like a square here and another one here. And I'm going to tag. Actually, I'm going to tag this one first. Go to insert, insert region. It's going to be something there. Let's do the same thing. Um, if I want to repeat exactly the same thing that I did at the top, all I have to do is click once and Sirius will remember the last setting. So it will be exactly the same. All right, um, let's um, let's do something else. Let's do something else. Um, I think, you know what? I'm gonna before I do that, I'm gonna add a couple more edge loops. One here, another one there. Doesn't have to be perfect, and I'm gonna actually split this or bevel it to split this edge like so. So now let's repeat what we did before. Okay. And actually I want this to be closer together. So I just mask this region, inverted it. Oops. Not this region, this one. Bring them closer. In fact, if you wanna, let me just don't do that. If you wanna be consistent with the sizes here, what you can do is enable uh, the X symmetry again. So now you have kind of like four, like four points of symmetry, or what two axes of symmetry, and then we can just do that. There. All right. Um, what I'm, when I, the reason I did this at the, at the beginning was because I want to be able to push this forward or, you know, extrude this forward with Q mesh just to add a bit of a gap. And then I can take these ones and push them back holding shift. That is roughly what I had in mind. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it's not too bad. All right. Um, if anything, we can we can do a pattern here. Just thinking, what would be the most interesting way to to go about it? Um, we can go ahead and split this. So let's go ahead and do an insert. And actually, let's put it right in the middle with the multiple edge loop tool. There we go. And dynamic is working fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and tag, let's see. I wanna turn off symmetry and I'm gonna tag these polygons. And the reason I'm doing this kind of like in a checker, checkered pattern is because um, with symmetry, if I do an insert, it's gonna do it towards the center. So actually, let me just show you an example of what I'm trying to avoid. So if I select these two, and then I go right click and go insert, and I can click on insert region, it's gonna do that. Um, if I select each polygon, that actually could work. It's just gonna do it like that. So yeah, I was just trying to make things more complicated. We can use that. <laughs> so I'm gonna tag all of them, right click, and instead of using insert region, I'm gonna use insert each polygon. That's probably a clever, more clever way to do it. And I'm gonna insert this a little bit, holding Alt just to change the polygroup. There we go. And then use the Q mesh to push this in. And these are gonna be kind of like the panels where I can put in some, you know, some lights maybe. Let's see how this looks with dynamic subdivision. It looks like, like windows. I think they, you know what, let's uh, undo that. This doesn't look very sci-fi-ish. Let's keep it, let's keep it simple. <laughs> right, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it like that. And I'm gonna just push this in. A couple of times. All 
All right, it's dynamic. Um, yeah, I think this looks much better than <laughs> what I had before, and we could actually we can actually use some paneling as well in here. So I'm going to enable symmetry back in the Z axis. I'm going to right click. I'm going to insert a single edge loop around there. Then I'm going to bevel that. Ah, actually, before I do that, let's um, let's move some points, shall we? Like that. So I just mask in and center to the unmask areas. All right. So I think that would be okay. Let's go ahead and bevel that. Again, my my design skills for this sci-fi stuff is not not something that I do all the time, at least for environments. Q mesh, and I'm going to push this in a couple of times. Dynamic, there we go. So we have that sort of paneling effect, and I think it's, I think it works. We can just tweak the coverage a bit. All right. So now we have. Um, one, two, three, four pieces. Uh, the floor is going to be just a plane, I think. If anything, in that plane we add, you know, some stuff later on. But that's that's it. I'm going to save, and we have about 30 minutes, so I think we can um, do the door. Unless you guys have any questions about what I'm doing so far, uh, we'll do the door, and that will be the most uh, feature piece, I guess. Uh, the most uh, slightly more complex than than the other pieces. Okay, just looking at the design, I think I made a mistake here as well, uh, which is this should be actually moving forward a bit more. It makes more sense now that I look at it. So I'm going to remove some of these um, extra loops. Delete, edge loop complete, that one, and that, whoops, that one. Right, so I think that that actually works better. To connect these ones, um, we can polish that line actually with another edge loop. Insert around there, and then we just move these points forward. All right, so I think that looks a bit better. So we have almost everything that we need except the door. So let's do the door. <laughs> um, so for the door, I'm going to duplicate this again. Duplicate, go into solo mode, initialize Q cube, and let's work on the X axis and then we just flip it. Hang on, turn off dynamic. There we go. So the door is. Um, it's not that it's more complex, but it just have some moving pieces that would be ideal if they if we actually make it work. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the with the frame. So let's go ahead and set this uh, to the height. I think roughly that. Let's just go ahead and put it in here. So we have an, a rough estimate. It's going to be the frame of the door. And we're going to go for that um, hexagonal shape. So probably what we can do is just bevel this straight away. So 
So don't worry about the thickness. Just gonna get kind of like those paneling effects straight away, and then we fix the rest. All right, and then we just need to take this, invert the mask. Hang on. Yeah. All right. Oh, I was working with both symmetries. Anyway, let's do it again. <laughs> so I'm gonna mask these points, invert it. Okay, I need to work with the symmetry in the uh, z-axis. I mean, this is why it's good to have the cam view, <laughs> so you know where you're pointing at. All right, let's do it again. With z, uh, with the symmetry in z, let's mask all of these points, invert that, go to move, center to the unmasked areas, and I'm gonna flatten that like so. Um, we can go ahead and mirror and weld this, but we just need to make sure that the mirror and weld is set to z-axis as well. Did it do it? Um, let's do mirror as well here. So, uh, never mind. I think I'm mirroring and welding the wrong thing anyway. <laughs> so let's just do it manually. Uh, today my brain is not up to the task. <laughs> All right. So now we have a simple, sh simple shape that has these kind of like hexagonal pieces. Um, one thing I can do is to start working on, you know, more modular way. I'm gonna duplicate this, just toggle it off, although I'm mean, still in solo mode. Um, and this one is going to be the frame. So I'm gonna tag all of these ones and these ones as well. So at the back as well. And I'm gonna go to inset, inset region, click and drag, and that's gonna create that sort of, you know, frame of the door. And if you're getting these, you know, results that is basically, is not giving you consistent um, thickness. Another way to do it, I mean, you can fix that very easily, but another way to do it is just to give everything a single polygroup and then just tag these sides, right? And use the Q mesh. So click and drag to give that consistent thickness Maybe a bit more thick, uh, a bit thicker like that. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take this one or this polygroup. Actually, let's give it a different polygroup so that it's different from this. And using the Q mesh with polygroup all, I'm gonna take this entire green polygroup, push it forward or push it inward, and it's going to connect with the one at the back. That's why I have the same topology, and Siri is going to delete it or yeah, bridge it in a way. So that's that's pretty handy. Um, also, let's go ahead and insert a multi edge loop so that we can have it right in the middle. So now we have an edge loop in the middle or in the center of this frame, as well as the, um, you know, at the outside. And then we can turn on the rest of the stuff that we have. I'm gonna toggle everything off except the frame and the door. And here's the door. I'm gonna scale it down a bit or up actually, and center it and actually scale it like so. All right, so now from this, we're gonna extrude or extract a couple of pieces to create the shape of the door. Um, and then, yeah, and then we, we go from there. So basically what I wanna do is have multiple edge loops inside here that then we can just decide which one stays and which ones go. Um, so let's do that. I'm gonna actually, you know what? Let's keep it really simple. I'm gonna hide everything but one of the, you know, the faces, the, the faces that we need to keep, and I'm gonna delete that. So you can just delete hidden, and now this is a single, you know, single side mesh uh, or open mesh, just a plane, and that's gonna be much easier. So let's insert uh, an edge loop. I'm gonna add one there. Let's see what we have in the in the plans. It's kind of like a straight line in there. Then goes like this. So I'm gonna put another one there. And then all the way down. <laughs> kind of. Alright. Uh, so now with this, I'm gonna maybe toggle symmetry off. Right click, go to the slide of the points, and 
let's see. So it goes down. Maybe not that much. Like that. Actually, that's all we have to do, really. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of pointless, pointless points that we added, but you know, I'm just gonna try to f uh, clean this up a bit. So this one is pointless. We don't need that, I think. Oh, we might actually. We might actually need it for a couple of things. So I'm just looking at the, let me just show you what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm gonna paint it here so that you have a, a reference. <laughs> That's roughly the shape of the door, right? Um, so it goes right in the middle like this, and then goes like that, and then like that. And there's another one there, and there's kind of like a, a couple of windows in here. So in a way, this one, this line in here that goes all the way down, that's this, this series of edge loops, or that, that single edge loop. Um, this one, that's the one, whoops, that's a hor horrible color to show you guys. Um, let's do it with, with this one. So this one right here is going to be probably this line. I'm just gonna push it up so that it goes from this point to this point, right? So, so let's try that. Let's do a line, I'm gonna do a, a straight line here. roughly there okay so I can take my sliding points move this like so and I'll show you a way to very easily sort this out in terms of um, you know make it consistent so I'm gonna put this one down almost at the same level and then bring one, this other one. I think that will be, nah, let's undo that. <laughs> All right, I think that will be fine. So now let's get rid of this. So I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna mask using the mask lasso. All of these points, invert that mask, bring in the gizmo, center it to those series of points. And then I'm gonna hold the Alt key to unlock the gizmo. And I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna try to match the the uh, green or the y-axis with that line and now I'm gonna scale it down so it's basically flattening in this and making sure that this is a straight line um, there's other ways to do it that's just a, an easy one cool so we have everything that we need what I'm going to do is assign polygroups so that it's easy for you guys to see what I'm trying to achieve here so polygrouping that part then this one and then this one right so that is that is the door in a nutshell um, what we can do as well is to go ahead and create the gaps for the windows as well so for that hmm. for that we can actually create a couple of lines So that's one. And again, don't worry about the topology at all. I'm just gonna try to find the shapes that we need and use them. All right. So again, I'm just gonna try to clean this up before I do anything. So I have the, I'm gonna give it polygroups again. So that's, that would be, now that actually we need to inset region. Oh, actually, I'm looking at the at the reference I have here, and it's not necessarily like that. Um, just thinking, what would be the easiest way? Let's just keep it simple. I'm gonna move some points. There we 
go. And same for this one. <laughs> Alright, I think I just got to a point where I think I'm happy with what I have, but I'm gonna, I mean, with what I have designed, but I'm gonna take uh, the liberty and make some decision as to where the design should go now. Alright, so let's go ahead and split these by groups and then we can work on them uh, separately, or not by groups, actually. We can split it by parts and extrude them individually. So let me show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to take this blue area and I'm going to tag it with the parts of the pink area that I want to keep. So let's say this is one. Of, this is going to be part of one, like one of the sliding doors, right? So I just tag that. I'm going to right click, Q mesh, click and drag to extrude it, but I'm going to hold the control key and that's going to extract that piece. So I'm going to extract that. There we go. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and split this, or I can hide it actually, it's going to be much easier. So I just I just hit that part and I'm going to split hidden, so now it's a separate subtool. I'm going to do the repeat the same idea with the other one, so tag what I need. It's probably that entire thing. Click, control. split hidden and then do the same thing with the green part which is really kind of like the main piece of that um, of that door click control split hidden and now I have uh, this as a separate thing that I can use later on for something else so I'm going to create my folder originals and toggle that off and put that one over there. All right, so now I have three pieces. Get out of solo mode and the frame, right? Uh, at different heights and, and positions, but then I can go ahead and give thickness individually. So let's go ahead and take this one uh, for, as an example. We have about 15 minutes, so I reckon we can finish the, the blocking of this today. Um, so this one is gonna be one single piece and we can go ahead and add um, the window here. So to generate that window, what I'll do is move some points around. Something, something roughly like that. Not sure if the window is gonna look good at all, but we'll see. So I'm just masking and moving points. It's going to be a tiny window here at the top. And if anything, we can add another one or another piece of that window there. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to tag this one and do insert, insert region. And I'm going to tag this one and repeat the same process. Inset region, single poly. All right. So now that I have this, I'm going to make sure these lines are consistent or straight. So I'm going to use the masking tools to mask this out, invert the mask, center to the unmasked areas, and then I'm going to squish them together. And I think it's just these ones anyway. Move it slightly to the right. All right. So now I can take, whoops, tag these ones. Tag these polygons with the Alt key. And I'm going to go ahead and Q mesh, not sorry, delete. 
and I deleted those polygons. I'm going to give it a single polygroup. So now this is the panel roughly that I want to keep. Um, so now what I can do is just go to the Q mesh and extrude this just to give it thickness. So that's going to be one piece and that gives me that that hole there for those windows or whatever this could be. Um, I think I can actually move this up just to keep in line with the design, with the visual language that we're trying to achieve here. And that, that should make things more interesting. All right, now the next one, this one is pretty straightforward. It's not gonna be anything too complicated, so let's go ahead and extrude that. And the third one, let's do the window first. So insert, sorry, insert the entire region. So something about there, and we have to fix this. So we get a straight line, um, you know, but this is the same process that I've been showing you. So it's pretty easy. Um, just, uh, just to be sure. I want to flatten this on this axis a bit. All right. So now I can tag these ones, delete, there we go. Um, single polygraph for this Q mesh extrude thickness. Alrighty. So, um, let's see, toggle this off and we have all the pieces that we need for the door. We just need to just put them in place. Really? That's all there is to it. So this is one, oh, chuck it around there. Maybe at the back, this is going to be the back. Um, this one will be kind of like on top of that. And this one is kind of like the one that covers everything on top or sits on top of both. Okay, so we have the door ready. Um, one thing that we can do though is, you know, add a couple of uh, indentations of paneling inside. So in this one, for instance, and these are very simple stuff to do with the C modeler. Uh, we can go ahead and insert right in the middle, right click, bevel, beveled everything, maybe not that much, or actually, yeah, let's bevel everything. That's roughly where I place it, so that's spot on. <laughs> um, I'm going to only tag, oh, let's tag everything, Q mesh, push this in, holding alt, change the polygroups, a little bit more of that, and dynamics of division, perfect, that looks good. So it creates that, you know, it makes sense <laughs> that it's, it's there so that the panels sort of interlock with each other. So let's do the same thing to all this off uh, for this one. So insert, bevel, and again, almost, almost where I wanted it anyway. So. Q mesh, push this in a bit, holding alt to change the polygroups, do it again. Dynamic. All right, so it kind of like makes sense. Uh, we can leave this other one so all covered anyway, um, uh, but we can repeat the same thing for, uh, for instance, the uh, this, well, the, the area where the window would be. And now that I look at this, I can also go ahead and go, you know what? Let's turn this off. Um, this window is way too high. It doesn't really doesn't really work for me. So I'm gonna use the mask lasso. Sorry, the yeah, the mask lasso. 
I'm gonna just push all of these points down. So all the points that actually make up that, maybe more, maybe more of that. Let's push it down a bit, and it's roughly in line with the other one. I think it makes more sense. Um, yeah, and also these points here. Hang on, let me do it again. All of these points, except this one. Oops. There we go. Um, we have to fix something in here. All right. Again, the, don't worry too much about the topology. Ultimately, what we need is that it looks good, and once we enable dynamic, it's gonna smooth a lot of these edges. Um, we can actually play with the coverage of this so that it's not as sharp. Same with this one, dynamic. Play with the coverage, and this one as well. All right, and then with the border, um, or the, the frame, uh, we can do something similar that to what we did with this. Uh, so for instance, right click, insert, not insert, sorry, insert, insert, insert single edge loop. I'm gonna click and drag. I'm gonna put it around there. So I'm just paying attention to that border and that's gonna be where this thing inserts anyway. And actually let's move or make everything a bit thicker. Right, so we have that line going in. I'm gonna click another one, and that creates kind of like the space to extrude and push this one in. Uh, that it kind of like makes sense as well that this panel goes in. I'm gonna do another one in here. So we're just gonna have uh, a bunch of different panels, I think. All right. So I'm gonna right click, go to bevel, not bevel, this one. Hang on, what's going on? Right click, bevel. So I'm gonna do that one. Another one there, with a different polygroup. Well, I mean, it's the same as the previous one and another one there. So now I can take the Q mesh and start playing around with this. So just different lengths, I guess, to make it look interesting. Dynamic subdivision, and there we go. So, looks pretty complex for just a couple of pieces. <laughs> and then uh, what we can do is, before I merge everything, or all of these pieces together for the door, uh, I'm gonna make sure, you know what, I think it's fine. I mean, I was gonna give it individual polygroups, but um, in case we wanna do something else later on, I think that's gonna be fine. Um, how are we time? We have about five minutes. So uh, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and just do some paneling here for the, for the windows and we call it a day. So insert, I'm gonna do the same thing for this one as well, straight away. Bevel, and make a, a thick window. Oops, I forgot to do it here at the bottom as well. All right, and then Q mesh. Um, this one, I'm actually gonna push it in. I think it'll be interesting. This one will push it back a bit. And then for this one, we do the same thing.
Mm, okay, so dynamic. Dynamic as well. And there we go. This is our door. I think it's working. Let's toggle dynamic off for all of the pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep everything separate just in case. So to do that, I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this door, right? And it's gonna be one of the originals. So I'm gonna push everything inside that everything that makes up the door. Then I'm gonna click on the cog icon on this folder and I'm gonna merge folder. So I'm gonna click on that. So we're just going to keep everything, all the originals in this folder, automatically turn it off. I can push that at the top so that I can keep it if, if I need it. But the new one is gonna be a merge object with all the pieces that make up this door, uh, which is exactly what I was going for, okay? So now I can toggle everything back on and I can use my gizmo and I can just sort of position this, you know, scale it down or up or whatever we need to do. All right, and I just wanna test something we really quickly. All right, so um, obviously there are gonna be gaps that we need to fill with something else. And I think that's why we're gonna use the insert meshes. But there are a couple of things that um, I think we can keep a bit more consistent. Um, so for instance, this line here, given by this panel, right? And this curvature here, and this one here, it's kind of like a replicate, uh, yeah, a replication or like a, a duplicate line or visual line as what we have here on the door. So it would be ideal if they kind of like match, but right now the angles of these are not really matching. Uh, this one kind of does, uh, just has a bit of a curvature. Uh, so we can try to change the shape of the door a bit just by moving some of these points up or just take the one in the at the bottom and then just push it. But I think um, I think changing the uh, the symmetry up and down of the or like the vertical symmetry or the horizontal symmetry of the um, of the door would be a good idea. So we can take the mask and let's go ahead and mask all of these points. For example, invert that, and then we push this up. I don't know if that looks all right. Nah, I think we're gonna push everything up. Hmm. No, I think it's gonna be easier just to to play around with this with this mesh really. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I think um, I think we, that that will require a little bit more thinking. <laughs> my my brain is fried up now. Um, I'm going to set this a bit more in place. Uh, actually, actually, it's not too bad because we have another piece that we're gonna add that I remember. Yeah. So it's all good. So that other piece is going to be based on. We still have one minute, so I'll just show you. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this, the frame. So the frame is going to help us create an, a, an extra piece. So I'm gonna, all of this uh, edge, it has the same polygroup, so I'm gonna right click, Q mesh, click and hold control. Hmm, there's some polygroups that are the same. Anyway, we'll do that in a second. So we have those meshes. Uh, I'm gonna use the select lasso to sort of hide the rest, right? And delete that. And then I can take my Q mesh again. And add a little bit of thickness in there. And I'm gonna flip the normals because right now 
I sort of like extrude everything and then went back in. So that created some flip normals there. And all right. So now with this piece, I actually only need one side. So I'm just going to set it up. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and we turn this one off or hide. I'm going to hide all of this. Ah, oh, come on. Hide. Oh, I have symmetry. There we go. Delete that. We can go ahead and bridge these two faces. Oh, actually, I'm going to delete these two loops. Bridge. There we go. Right, so this piece, uh, we're going to use it maybe with array meshes, maybe at the end, duplicate it. Uh, we're going to use it to, you know, fill in some of the areas. Um, and I think it's going to be a good one for this area right here, for example. So we can take that and scale it down or up. And for instance, we can take all of these points, move it back, flatten those as well. And then we have kind of like a like a wall that has this this shape. Oops. Let me just clean it up. All right, and then we can tag it and extrude that bit. All right, and then obviously we can mirror and weld and that sort of thing. But it's gonna be a, a good, a good piece to sort of like fill in gaps. Uh, we can, you know, duplicate it, put it like right in the middle, uh, that sort of thing, and that could frame the the door as well. So we'll leave that one as a as an odd piece that we can move around and that sort of thing. Uh, actually, we can scale the door down a bit more. Push it down slightly. I mean, these ones, all, all the, the positions of all that is going to change. We have to play around with that later, but it's going to give you an idea. And I'm just going to take these points and bring them down as well. All right, looks a bit more interesting, right? So all of these ones are pieces or modular pieces that we can use uh, hopefully next um, next stream um, just to to arrange. Uh, we're, we're creating this digital uh, kind of like a playground and these are all the toys that we have and then we just need to arrange them and, and create different things. But uh, hopefully guys, that gives you a, a good idea of or a different technique, maybe just using the C modeler for environment. And um, in this case, we're doing just a sci-fi corridor. Um, we're gonna, I want to probably do a, a quick render afterwards um, just to to focus on this. But I'm going to do a quick save. We have uh, three different pieces. Sorry, uh, f six six different pieces that we can use. Um, hopefully, next stream to use the nano mesh and place them in a nice environment and create this uh, sci-fi corridor. All right. Um, I think that's it for me today, guys. I I'm starting to feel a little bit more sick now, <laughs> but we made it. We made it to the to the two-hour mark of the stream anyway. So hopefully, I'll feel better for next next week. Um, I'll leave it here, guys, and stay safe, stay inside, and wash your hands. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Bye.